Hey Capricorn, this is your weekly tarot card reading from Born Without Boundaries to Row. It is for Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising Sign. I'm going to quickly review the um, astrology that's coming up before tomorrow, which is the new moon in Pisces. And then we're going to get into the cards. Remember Capricorn, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel. Ring that notification bell as well so that you know when I upload your favorite content, Capricorn gets uploaded every single Wednesday. If you'd like to join me for daily tarot card readings, um, which is a general reading, but it's live, I do that on my second YouTube channel, Astrology Motivation, so go check that out. Also, there's always an extended reading, Capricorn, and that reading link is down below each video. I also pin it in the comments, along with a link to the Unbound Membership reading. Um, Unbound Membership enables you to have all the extended readings access to all of them unlimited access as well as other perks like two or more readings members only readings with me so you can ask me any tarot or astrology questions that are pressing for you and you can rely on that every single week so that's a great thing to look into and I hope to see you on that unbound okay let's start with the astrology um so it is beautiful astrology, absolutely. Um, the moon and the sun coming together in any sign, it happens, it happens once every month. So this is a real sense of certainty and sureness. And, and that's a good thing around the new moon because new moons are like, let's welcome in something new, right? Let's start a new cycle here. And you want the sun and moon to be on the same page when you are using the power of yourself to manifest something new into your life. You want it to be very clear. And it does, that, that, that happens for us, and the universe gives us that to us every month. What makes this particularly special is that it's happening in Pisces, and that doesn't make things particularly special, except that this year, both Neptune and Jupiter, rulers of Pisces, both of them are native energetic rulers of the zodiac sign Pisces. Uh, Jupiter is the old ruler, Neptune, once it was discovered, is the new ruler, uh, and they both rule over expansion and creation. Um, Neptune is more esoteric, spiritual, ethereal, because it, it's, it's dreams. And what is dreams? Dreams, yes, they're illusionary, but they also sit outside the realm of physics. They sit outside the realm of the real, which means they are the surreal, they are the infinite, they are the impossible that is made possible if we believe in them. Dreams are our connection to the eternal. It's the place that we don't have to go by any rules. And they can be deceptive, but they can also be expanded, expansive, expansionive, or they can also help us to expand, especially with the presence of Jupiter there, which between Jupiter and Neptune is a really grounding energy because Jupiter allows us to expand and our mind to open and us to be optimistic in real world situations, day to day situations. It's closer to the inner planets, right? It's not so far away away from us. It sits there and sort of protects us from all these larger en energies and it helps us to incorporate the bigger energies or the outer energies into our day-to-day -day lives. And Jupiter is the eternal optimist. So there's this concept of we can do it. We can, we can manifest our dreams into reality. And there's this energy of yes, that's coming with this new moon. Um, in particular, um, there is this really interesting link between, or aspect, excuse me, really interesting aspect between the North Node and South Node and Neptune. And that really interesting link lends, link lends those really interesting aspects lend me to believe, Capricorn, that this is going to give us a do-over, that this is the big blessing that's coming. And the do-over has to do with where in what house this is happening, particularly in your natal chart. But for Capricorns in general, this is how happening in the third house, because Pisces is your third house, in education, communications, um, community, travel, short-term travel, one-on-one -on -one personal conversation, as well as dealing with our duality. So in the ways that we have had a hardship or deconstruction because people haven't understood us or we haven't been able to articulate um, who we really are or truly are or be seen for who we truly are, we will now get the ability and the insight, the wisdom and the opportunity to be able to communicate that clearly 
and effectively so you can move forward in life. So this is a good time for you to get a second chance where you thought people sort of had rejected you or didn't understand you well enough um, because there are some challenging, uh, uh, m m minor but challenging aspects uh, between the sun and moon and Jupiter and between the sun and moon in particular and uh, Mars and Venus, which is your value system. In other words, people kind of got it screwed up where people got it messed up or you got it messed up um, about p other people's value systems or if they value you or how they value you. All those mis miscommunications there, you'll be given a second chance or a do-over to clear up those communications and get the communications right and reset and get on a new path to intimacy based on correctness, based on seeing each other correctly. So this is where your opportunity lies, right? And check your natal chart if you want that specific opportunity for yourself to know which part of um, which part of your life, which house this expansive opportunity falls in. But that's a general categorizing. That's a that's a general energy for all of Capricorn. So let's get into. Um, Let's get into the reading. Oh, Capricorns. If you've been feeling a little bit woozy, a little bit tired, happy birthday, Doug Denny. Let yourself be. This is Piscean energy. Trust it. I know it's hard for you to trust sitting down and resting, but it's not good to fight this energy. It's actually good to work. If you want to apply that Saturnian work ethic, work within this energy, work within the energy of dreams and allow yourself to conceptualize now. And you'll find a lot less stress and you'll find the pressure starting to be relieved. Um, Make your dreams real and a time to heal. So there's definitely, um, ooh, okay, a lot of kundalini energy. <laughs> so um, the churning and the burning and the desires that are deep inside of you and those especially that have turned into toxins because they have not been addressed or released or allowed out. This could also be some sort of sexual tension that is going to finally be relieved inside of you. And then we have spider spirit, make your dreams real. So a, a weaving or a conceptualizing, even a writing, talking about writing about about writing about healing, putting pen to paper about what is best for you, uh, what what will make you feel good, things that will make you feel good, starting to write a strategy or really put into motion uh, or communicate for others. So you could be actually doing this for others, writing up plans um, to help others heal, right? Communicate those plans to others. Make your dreams real and it's time to heal. Um, I have to say with these two energies, you're going to be, this is such a beautiful opportunity for you to be so proud of yourself right now um, that you will feel a level of, oh God, I'm so glad that that happened. Oh God, God, thank you so much for allowing this moment and me to see these things and me to understand these things and giving me the chance to release all of these feelings um, so I could, so I could move on and actually uh, create um, there's some sort of creation that's coming out of healing for you. Um, could even be with medicine. Remember, snake is a primary symbol within the, um, the medical field because snake is a healer. It's about releasing toxins or learning how to fight against toxins. So we have... Wasp, sometimes life stinks. This is something that has been bothering you. Pain, suffering, sadness, sorrow. Um, it's been bugging you. You've been thinking about it a lot. I don't know, but it's it's happened in the past, probably last year sometime. And then we are trust in divine detours. I think you got thrown off track. Uh, um, ultimately, that's it's saying that you need to get back on track and you're going to get put back on track. Um, you were distracted or pulled away. And ultimately, that was for a reason. But now it's time to get back on track. <clears throat> Trust in divine detours. It's saying that God is actually going to be leading you back on track by um, taking you out of 
what you expected to happen. So trust the unexpected in this energy, which is also not necessarily like you, but who cares? This is not about being your typical self. This is about being your best self. So ultimately Capricorn, within the energy for this week, number one goal, uh, number one uh, strategy is to let spirit guide you and trust those uh, opportunities that come up that were unexpected. Trust the unexpected um and then we have time to collaborate this is going to actually bring you closer or help you work with people um it even could even be a romantic connection absolutely especially with venus and mars coming together this is a sense of a healing and a clearing when it comes to any kind of partnership okay that's our base reading let's see what we've got on top of that um Yeah, this could also be a sense of anything that was making you sick or making your partnership sick. It's almost like in some ways you're starting to trust your partner more. Uh, awareness. Ooh. Enlightenment, awakening, awareness is here. It's almost like you're starting to become aware that you can't do this by yourself and that you're not supposed to. Um yeah, this and that, that that is not a bad thing. It's a very difficult thing for any cardinal sign to accept because cardinal signs have a natural tendency to want to do things by themselves, right? To want to do things for themselves, by themselves. Um, but ultimately, this is a difference. You're, you're detouring from that. Trust the detours. Trust the healing. Trust the coming together. And trust whoever is coming toward you to actually help you put things together. Because it's in that beautiful illumination of that, that Piscean energy in your third house. Communications. One-on-one -on -one experiences. Right? One-on-one -on -one communications. Understanding each other. That is really going to light up up your world and make you experience and realize things in a more fuller capacity as well as opening the world to you right um people becoming aware even through your connection with just one person maybe becoming aware of just how amazing you are or how amazing um you know what you have to offer is so those personal connections, those friendships, your siblings, those are going to be extremely important to you right now, those relationships that you share with those people. Um, not necessarily romantic, but definitely friendship or siblings. Uh, time to go is in reverse, but I don't think it wants to be. Um, deep knowing is coming up in the past. Deep knowing um, and by the book is here. Uh, and then we have, okay, so you were studying something hardcore. You had dedicated yourself to, this started in the past and it was difficult for you. Um, I think that you dedicated yourself to learning maybe a new trade, a new skill. Uh, I, I don't know, whatever you dedicated yourself, this, this education happened. Oh, so that's, oh shit, sookie sookie. There's an opportunity coming through what you just got educated in because this is the illumination of your third house. Third house is education. Gemini is the master teacher educator. So ultimately, this illumination, this um, revelation, this demonstration of what you have er learned, you will now be able to demonstrate what you have learned and um, draw attention to yourself for or be known for it. This is an opportunity to actually expand your life through that education, what you learn. And this was a deep knowing. So it wasn't just like rote memory or, you know, going through, going through the motions. No, you really wanted to understand something and get like a, a mastery of it this was extremely important for you and then time for a nap is here so in other words maybe you took a break or you took a rest or you um i don't know something interfered with the education but i think that this is part of education that this is part of learning that we don't allow ourselves enough. And that part of learning is once you push yourself and once you challenge yourself and you get yourself to a point of frustration, you've got to, to sleep. Um, and especially in Piscean energy, 
it's almost like the sleep that you're experiencing now, the rest, the relaxation is actually what helped your brain just work out all of those things that your stress was making impossible for you to figure out. So it's like by de-stressing yourself, you undid those chains and everything went into the correct order. Um, this is also a sense of maybe being educated has taught you what to that you have to unwind, right? Or what to leave behind or what weight to take off of your shoulders. And then we have time to go. I don't think this, this, uh, this card is in reverse, um, which tells me it's like, it, it, I don't know. You want to go though. I don't know what's holding you back. So that's what I want to understand. What is holding Okay, let me just clarify, please. What is holding Capricorn back? What is hap What is holding Capricorn back? What is ha holding Capricorn back? Um, death. Um, which is rebirth, which is, um, okay. What is holding you back? I think you needed clarity. Um, or the two of swords and ace of swords. Um, ultimately, you needed to be ready to be completed, to completely finished with something. You needed to be ready to be like, to, to, to let go of something entirely. Um, two of swords and ace of swords is not being able to make a decision, being stuck between two different decisions. And it's almost like you're realizing that you didn't want either one of them. Ace of swords is clarity coming. Um, there's a lot of scorpionic energy here for you. This is the restart. This is definitely the restart, the recalibration. You needed to shut down completely Capricorn because I feel like th th there was some stress level that was killing you. And what was keeping you from going was like, you had to stop pushing. You had to like, let it completely break down in order for it to be built back up again. And the problem was trusting it, trusting that something beautiful was going to come from completely letting go. But ultimately, that's the challenge is to completely let go the comfort zone. That's that's what the south node is, or things you've already been through things you've already done things you've already experienced. Um, how is that challenging the current energy? It's almost like real. Oh, you guys have perceived yourself as one thing for so long and ultimately it was getting in your way because so much that Mars, Venus and Pluto energy is where it's happening, where it's happening in your first house. So legitimately, this is fucking saying you had to fucking let that die, that old version of yourself and how you did things and what you used to value. Ultimately, you had to just say, fuck that shit. That's not me anymore. It's hard to do because you identify yourself as all of those things, but they were getting in your way. They were blocking you. That's why you weren't ready because you weren't ready to completely let go of everything that you are. Ultimately, though, that is the secret to your success because everything that you will be is what your future is. <laughs> Ultimately, it's okay to let that chapter of your life close. And that is that that is the secret and that is how you will move on you are really going to do things differently this time around and i think it has a lot to do with connecting with another person and trusting another person okay let's keep going um um yeah i don't get into like i don't specifically get into um what areas of your life that's going to be in i do that in the extended reading which i hope you guys will join me for um, so really when you're listening to this, I would say apply it to the aspect of your life that you feel most 
like it's most intense right now the answers you need are coming full moon in Gemini. So there's definitely a conversation, a sit down that the two of you have to have. Two people are here um, to basically say, let's completely restart. Let's do this over. But you can do it now. You can legitimately fair, like you can in all fairness be able to look across the table at somebody and say, I definitely want to try this again because I have absolutely changed. There is no doubt in my mind uh, that I, I know now where I fucked up and how I have to make things better and that I want to make things better. It was always in me to make things better and do things differently, but I couldn't let go of a concept of me that I had to be. A feeling that uh, of, of me that I had to be it, because I had learned, I don't know, maybe from your past, that if you didn't do things this way, this is, this is also that deep knowing, right? If I learned in my past that if I didn't do things a specific way, then I wasn't going to succeed or I was always going to feel unwanted or left behind. And now I'm in a situation where those things are, those qualities or those lessons are actually ruining my potential. They're actually ruining my progress. They're ruining my happiness. And so I had to let go of seeing myself that way. I had to let go of identifying myself as those things and enable other aspects of my character to become more important and enable, which enables other people to come in and share the value and share, um, not only share the value, share the responsibility, share the challenges. Um, this is a much more collaborative version of you. I'm going to go into the tarot reading now. I hope you guys join me. The links are below.